Welcome everyone, um, Thursday afternoon, 3 p.m. here on the West Coast. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe. Um, you know, troubling, troubling headlines when I read this, Uber and Lyft pricing algorithms charge more in non-white areas. If this is true, this is true. Shame on you, Uber and Lyft. Uh, this study was conducted in Chicago. I'll go into great lengths. And the way you fight back, the way you fight back as an African-American, very simple, telling you how you do it. Um, in November, when the ballot comes, right, when the ballot, they want, they want to Uber and Lyft are behind these initiatives, these fake initiatives, protect drivers and services, ballot measure, uh, protects right of app-based rideshare delivery, drivers to choose flexible work as independent contractors. We're not independent contractors. So come November, you shut this ballot down because enabling this company, enabling them to carry on to treat drivers as a independent contractor, they're not true independent contractors, gives them the power to control that algorithm to control your lives, right? And it's right there. It says there, Uber and Lyft pricing algorithms charge more in non-white areas. To all my non-white brothers and sisters out there, um, I'm telling you what, show them in November when it comes to ballot time, who has the power, right? Shut Uber and Lyft down so that they don't impose higher fees on you. This is wrong, my friends. This is what I fight for, right? We are, we are fighting for equality in pricing. Doesn't matter whether you're white, whether you're black, or whether you're Asian, you pay one price. Why should certain ethnicities, why should certain colored race pay more and the other less? That is absolute BS. And their response to this, their response to this, ladies and gentlemen, Uber and Lyft's response, they get out a legal eagle to say, well, you didn't conduct the study properly and you don't have all the data. Every possible way to legally wiggle out of that survey that they did. And these guys know their stuff. And why do I say that? I believe that I think there was about 100 million trips, 100 million trips that were analyzed, the data was analyzed in Chicago, right? And they came to this conclusion and Uber and Lyft says, well, you know, you didn't have all the factors and they try to wiggle themselves out, getting the attorneys to answer this survey, this study, right? If this is true, this is a massive, massive, massive class action lawsuit. If Uber and Lyft are putting higher fees on non-white riders, shame on them, shame on them. And the truth will come out and we will shut them down in November at that ballot measure, right? That is where you exercise your power against Uber and Lyft in November, because they are trying to push that ballot through so that they can continue to manipulate drivers and can continue to treat drivers as non-independent contractors. We're not full uh, we're not fully independent contractors, ladies and gentlemen. Some people think they are, but they're not under the true definition. And the way you fight back is in November against that ballot measure that Uber and Lyft are trying to impose in California. Please, very, very, very important that you don't skip the beat. You don't skip that part and you make sure that you uh, know what you're voting on. Don't let them convolute the waters. Don't let them continue to control those algorithms over you, over the rider, over the driver. We're going to stop that in November. So the algorithms that ride hailing companies such as Uber and Lyft use to determine fares appear to create a racial bias by analyzing transport and census data in Chicago, Alan Kaliskin and Askar Pandey at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. have found that ride-hailing companies charge a higher price per mile for a trip if 
the pick-up point or destination is a neighborhood with a higher proportion of ethnic minority residents than for those with predominantly white residents. That is wrong, my friends. Uh, Wulanyo Kwezi, my brother, live from Ghana. Prices and Uber charges very high. You blocked this week? Well, let's talk about it. Let's just finish this thing. Basically, if you're going to a neighborhood where there's a large African-American population, you're going to pay a higher fair price for your ride, says Kaliskin. How does Uber fight this data that they've presented? How do they say, well, you know, that's not the truth. If they are basing their studies on 100 million trips and they have that data, and if they are right, I can tell you Uber and Lyft are in a lot of trouble. They're in a lot of trouble with the African and African American community, and they are in a lot of trouble when it comes to the November ballot. Mark my words, these people will not forget that you are manipulating their affairs. You cannot forget that, right? You have to use that vote against Uber and Lyft. Um, let me read this again. Basically, if you're going to a neighborhood where there's a large African-American population, you're going to pay a higher price for your ride. And I ask you, Uber and Lyft, why does that African-American gentleman or lady have to pay a higher price when they're driving to a specific neighborhood and I, as a white, I'm driving to a white neighborhood? Why is that, Uber and Lyft? Why do you have double standards? Why are you treating people of other color this way, right? So we have to hold Uber and Lyft responsible, my friends. This is wrong. We're fighting for equality here, right? We're in a big, big game-changing period uh, in history where we can make change. And Uber and Lyft are treating people as lesser citizens and hitting them with higher fares. That's wrong, Dara Koshashawi. That's wrong, John Zimmer. And both of you know it. And we will come after you in November when it comes to voting time on that ballot. Mark my words. Unlike traditional taxis, ride hailing services have dynamic fares, which are calculated based on factors including the length of the trip as well as local demand. Although it is unclear what other factors these algorithms take into consideration because ride hailing companies don't make all of their data available. You know, and then Uber and Lyft fund these type of organizations to fight this ballot measure, right? Um, saying we should really be able to choose work as an independent contract. And we are not an independent contractor. So they're completely muddying the waters. They're completely confusing the rider out there. And I'm telling you what, the rider, the rider is not going to be confused and is not going to be lied to when November, when it's voting time at the ballot. All of these shenanigans paid for by Uber and Lyft. They're on this board here, right? Paid for by Uber and Lyft, right? Um, we will stop that. We're going to stop the manipulation of algorithms. We are going to create equality across the board, period, whether they like it or not. Now, the re... Um, unlike traditional taxis, ride-hailing services have dynamic fares, which are calculated based on factors including the length of the trip as well as local demand. Although it is unclear what other factors these algorithms take into consideration because ride hailing companies don't make all their data available. That is true. So the researchers analyze data from more than 100 million trips, not 1 million or 2 million, 100 million trips taken in Chicago through ride hailing apps November, from November 2018 and December 2019. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to make a prediction here. Whatever they found in Chicago, over 100 million trips, you can bet any dollar amount that the same applies for San Francisco, the same applies for LA, the same applies for Miami, the same applies for New York. This is not just a Chicago thing. Although the survey was based on 100 million trips, which gave eye-popping results, right? You, can, you know that they are doing the same thing in these other cities. And African-American rider and voter must not forget this when it comes to the November ballot. Please circulate this video. Uh, the researchers 
analyze data from more than 100 million trips taken in Chicago through ride hailing apps between November 2018 and December 2019. Each ride contained information including pickup and drop off location. Pickup and drop off location. The duration of that trip and the cost, the dollar, the cost amount, and whether the ride was an individual or shared trip. The data doesn't include demographic details such as the ethnicity of the rider. They are just looking where is this rider going from this area into an African American area, this area into a white area. They don't know, they cannot see the color of the skin of the passenger within the car. They are looking at the raw data and they're coming to a very, very, very powerful, very convincing conclusion, right? In that period, 68 million trips were made by individual riders and the majorities of these used Uber. The duo compared the trip data against information from the US Census Bureau's American Community Survey, which provides aggregate statistics about neighborhoods, including population, ethnicity breakdown, education levels, and median house prices. They found that prices per mile were higher on average if the trip pick up or drop off location was in a neighborhood with a lower proportion of white residents, a lower median house price or lower average educational at attainment. And that is shameful. That is shameful. Dara Koshoshawi, an immigrant, pushing this stuff, type of stuff is disgusting. You should step down. John Zimmer, you pushing this, double standards here, is disgusting. You should step down. Even in the absence of identity being explicitly considered in how an algorithm results are decided, the structural and historical nature of racism and the way that it informs geography, opportunity, and life chances mean that racial disparities can still appear, says Oz Keys at the University of Washington in Seattle. Prune Picker, how are you? Michael Smith in the house, Layla in the house, Wolanyo in the house, my info CLA in the house. Chicago, the site of this analysis is a case in point as a result of, amongst other things, redlining practices. It remains highly geographically segregated, says Keyes. Redlining is practice in which mortgage lenders refuse to offer loans in certain neighborhoods. So that is well known, that term redlining in the mortgage industry. This is no different what Uber and Lyft are doing. This is redlining. This should cause us to further question studies of fairness and bias in algorithms which promise to end algorithmic, algorithmic racism by simply not mentioning race, says Key. My friends, collectively, we are going to end their algorithmic racism. We are going to end Uber algorithmic racism. We are going to end Lyft algorithmic racism. We're gonna put that in the history books and we're gonna say no. And when are we gonna do that? In November at this ballot measure. The researchers found no statistical link to suggest that neighborhoods with higher proportions of ethnic minorities had higher demand for rides which could potentially explain the higher fare prices. We recognize that systematic biases are deeply rooted in society and appreciate studies like this that look to understand where technology can unintentionally discriminate, said a Lyft spokesman. Uh, we, we were not aware of this, but we are willing to look at this. Don't give us this BS, Lyft spokesman. You guys concocted this, you created this. So don't pretend like you never knew this existed. There are many factors that go into pricing. This is Lyft's excuse. There are many factors that go into pricing, time of day, trip purpose, and more. And it doesn't appear that this study takes that into account. We are eager to review the full results when they are published to help us continue to prioritize equity in our technology. Basically saying, and this is where they are absolutely wrong, because the time of the day, the trip purpose doesn't make any difference. The difference is what price is it 
from point A to B if you're traveling into a non-white area or into a white area. It doesn't matter, lift, what time of the day. It doesn't matter what the purpose of that trip is. It is a systematic bias, right? This is, as they say, what did they call it? Um, here it is. Where was that big, big worth? It's algorithmic racism. That's what it is. Algorithmic. Here it is. It's a big word. And I felt like I have to, have to put the story out there. It, it's a sensitive topic, but it has to be discussed. Right? Algorithmic racism. And they sort of pretend, well, you know, you guys need to conclude your studies and then share the data. The studies are in. A hundred million trips have provided specific data. So end the excuses, right? End the blame game. They're trying to blame the researchers, trying to shift the responsibility. It lies with Uber and Lyft to make the changes and end algorithmic racism. Uber did not respond to a request for comment before publication, obviously, because they know that they cornered. Let's rather be quiet on this one. We Uber, and it's best we don't talk. And you know why you don't talk? Because you're too damn ashamed to admit that you practice algorithmic racism, Dara Koshashawi, as an immigrant from another country to this country. This is how you're treating our African-American brothers and sisters. Shame on you, Dara Kay. And again, ladies and gentlemen, you vote in November against the Uber and Lyft ballot, especially here in California. Under U.S. law, it is illegal. Listen up, Dara. Listen up, John Zimmer. Under U.S. law, it is illegal to discriminate against an individual on the basis of protected attributes, including race. So I hope this becomes a big lawsuit. I hope they slap them awake. I hope that they send a powerful message and say, no longer will we tolerate algorithmic racism towards non-whites. And I will fight till that is abolished. That is one of the reasons I am a voice for drivers and I will be a voice for riders in this case as well. So I will cross the barrier here and come to the defense of those riders, right? Because who is the common problem? The common problem manipulating the algorithm with drivers and riders happens to be Uber and Lyft. So under US law, it is illegal to discriminate against an individual on the basis of protected attributes, including race. The study findings are problematic. They're very problematic, says Kaliskin. Even though these algorithms are supposed to be fair and they are not using protected attributes, they seem to have a significant impact on these neighborhoods. This study shows how algorithmic bias by postcode and race can creep into even the most unexpected places, says Noel Sharkey at the University of Sheff Sheffield, United Kingdom. It is yet an, another example in a long list of how ethnicity and race bias has found a new home in computer software. There is no excuse for automation biases and su such systems should be shut down until such time as they can demonstrate fairness and equality. And Uber and Lyft should shut down this system until they can say, you know what, we've corrected this. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to correct it in November at the ballot. We're going to end this. What did um, Romeo says, Joseph, I don't blame you for doing that. Your safety is important. What did Joseph say? Yeah, Michael Smith says Uber is offering loans to try and avoid AB5. I've seen that as well. Nashville, Tennessee, back at work. Prune Picker, thank you, welcome. James Campbell, is Uber trying to wipe out all accountability and then come back out as something other than Uber without actually being something that isn't Uber? Very good point. Joseph Contreras, this is totally false. Uber and Lyft drivers stay away from areas that have problems. 
Trust me, as a white-looking Hispanic, I'm not going to drive in an area known to be hostile to white. And I'm going to tell you where you are making a huge mistake, Joseph Contreras, right? That is your racial bias. You, you've, tr you've shown your true colors right there. You've shown your true colors right there, right? Um, by, by making that statement. And who says that they're not African-American riders, uh, African-American drivers taking their brothers and sisters to these neighborhoods? What they're looking at is the data of the price and that non-whites are paying higher fares to be transported into one non-white areas. So your facts don't add up, buddy. And you've really, really outed yourself. I am extremely disappointed in that comment, Contreras, right? Um, Layla Riley, I have a question. Uber driver prices pick up, uh, go to that six hours to Tampa, to Englewood, Florida, and he pay 500. You're going to have to send me more information. Chris B in the house. 100 million rideshare sample is a very large sample size. Thank you very much. Right, and you can do the same. You could do the same in LA. You could, could do the same in Miami. You could do the same in uh, Denver or Washington DC or Philadelphia or New York or New Jersey, you would come to the same conclusion. The bottom line is it's time to end algorithmic bias. If you're a person like jo J uh, Joseph Contreras and you do not want to drive in those areas, right? Because you have a specific prejudice, you don't have to, right? That's your decision, Joseph. But what we are showing here is that a trip that or originates in one area and goes into a white area, doesn't matter who the driver is, if he's black, Asian, or white, doesn't matter who the driver is. What they're looking at is from where to where is the trip taking place? And if one car is driving from point A to point B in a white area or from point A to point C in a black area, same mileage, they're paying different rates. That is the argument here, right? Had you listened to the article, had you listened to everything that they said, you would have completely understood that. So I am extremely disappointed here in Contreras's answer. And I'll shove that mirror straight in your face, brother. You got to own that one. Abstract echo, if we were to beat the measure at the ballot box, someone's going to have to create a good TV commercial campaign. Here it is. This is your TV commercial campaign. This is it. If you want to beat them, if you want to bring people out that are disadvantaged, run this type of ad, right? And I can tell you what, there are probably a, a, a lot of YouTubers that will want to stay far away from this topic. I urge them. In fact, I challenge them to look up the story and make a video, right? Because this is wrong. It is wrong on every single level that there is algorithmic racism, right? It should make a t-shirt. Algorithmic racism. Dara Kay engages in algorithmic racism. And then they pretend, they send their goons and their attorneys out and say, oh, you haven't taken into account what time of the day or what reason for the trip. It does not matter what the reason for the trip or what time of the day. It depends on the trip from where to where and on the mileage. And you compare apples to oranges. I'm sorry, you're comparing apples to apples. And why are these apples more expensive than the same apples in this basket? Why, are the, why is this dozen of apples, dozen of trips, more expensive than this dozen of apples? We're comparing apples to apples here. Um, Prune Picker says, Torsten, what do you think of sneeze guards in the car? The barrier, I think it's brilliant, right? If, if the guy is going to uh, sneeze or spit against the screen, seal it up on all the sides, keep it out, keep your mask on, keep ventilation going, right? But that's money worth spent, my friends. That's ride share petitions is money worth spent. It really is. And they're expensive, but your life is more valuable, right, than getting infected.
All right, my friends, we don't have to make this endlessly long. I think, um, I think you understand how this thing went down. University involved, 100 million trips looked at. Um, please hit the like button. Come on, yeah, I'm coming out. You're putting my time fighting against algorithmic racism. I have 19 people. 19 people in the house. That's not much, 19, but I only have, now I have eight. Thank you. Right, we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to push for positive change, ladies and gentlemen. We're trying to push for positive change. And I truly, truly hope, hope that come November, at least in California at the ballot, when Uber and Lyft are trying to muddy the waters and trying to create things such as protect app-based drivers and services, they're funding this. There's the same people that collected the signatures to, you know, shut down our earning opportunities. No, right? They tell the world that we are independent contractors, but we're not true independent contractors. And they want to keep us in that algorithmic stronghold. We shut them down in November, especially when you hear this type of news, right? This type of algorithmic racism. We shut them down. We use our collective voting power in November. And I think it's Moose said it very, very accurately. 100 million ride sample is a very large sample size. Right? And I'm telling you what, the other, the other article that I read about this, right, which is this one over here. It's the same one. It goes into... Much, much, much more detail. Researchers find racial discrimination in dynamic pricing algorithms used by Uber and Lyft. It is not just African Americans. It's Latinos and Asians are also affected by this racial um, algorithmic bias. And I hope that Latinos, I hope that African Americans, I hope that um, Asians vote against Uber and Lyft in that ballot because they are racially discriminating, charging them more than white people. It is wrong. It should be equality. Why am I treated with more privilege? Why am I paying a lesser of a price than my, my other brothers? Makes no sense. Layla Riley says Uber picked, up, picked us up six hours ago. Back to Tampa, Englewood, for it cost me five or six hundred dollars. That's what you paid? That is nuts. How long was the trip? How many hours? Dispute it, right? Or put in a query. So yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of news on this topic, and rightfully so. And it'll get more and more exposure. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This, my friend, is just the tip of the iceberg, right? All right, um, we're coming up to the 30-minute mark. I'm going to keep it 30 minutes. I'm going to go and pick up my son in Malibu. He's surfing with his friends. Um, today was more a paper and video day, a desk day, an office day. Tomorrow I'm going to be out in the field again. If I can get one more like on the way out, I have one more minute to get one more like. I'm on 29 minutes. I want to get to 30 minutes and I'm trying to get one more like. Anybody squeeze out one more like, smash that like button. And again, I'm urging Dustin, Harry, all the other YouTubers to take a position on this, to highlight this. This is wrong, ladies and gentlemen, on every single level. Algorithmic racism is wrong. And I hope that the other Uber tubers or YouTubers stand up or take a stand on this. No matter where they stand, they need to take a stand and make a video on this. I challenge them. Uno, por favor. One more, please. One more like. I'm going to end it on 10. Give me that last one. Absolutely. 
Me Bisman says, keep on exposing this crap. That's what this channel is here for, to hold up the mirror, to hold up the mirror and show what, thank you for those two likes. I really appreciate it. To show what these companies are up to. And then they sort of like, oh no, this cannot be true data because you didn't take the time of the day into consideration. You didn't take the reason for the trip into consideration. Does not matter Uber or Lyft. What matters is that they compared apples to apples, a trip with the same mileage from point A to a white area, from point A to a non-white area, and there were two different pricing categories, and that was conducted over 100 million trips. Which part of that don't you understand, Uber and Lyft, or are you not able to take responsibility here? They've been caught with their pants down, and we're going to keep on exposing their crap. Absolutely right. All right, I got, um, we're over the 30 mark. I wish you a happy Thursday. We have t Friday tomorrow getting ready for the weekend. Um, hope your monies, your unemployment, your PUA has come in. Uh, if you are driving, please stay safe. As the one gentleman um, said, he's thinking of getting a partition, right? Do whatever you can. You know, these things are available everywhere now. Just buy one, put it in the car. Let, let the client use it for free, right? You know, two months, you could have, two months ago, you could have charged an arm and a leg for things like that. Just put it out there and let them use it. Make sure they're wearing their masks. Make sure that your windows are open, that it's ventilated. And Abstract Echo says, Shalom, back to you, my brother. Thank you for coming into the stream. Abstract Echo says, S-H-I-T, shit equals sure happy it's Thursday. Sure, happy. <laughs> Is that your own creation or how did you come up with that one? Jimmy. All right, my friends, my amigos, my friends, my friends. Thank you, my amigos. Have a great day. Drive safe if you're out there in the field and do whatever it takes to stay safe. Much easier to get the sanitizer. I've seen it everywhere. Remember the times when everybody was going for the toilet paper, everybody was going for the sanitizer, everybody was going for the masks. Well, they've been producing, 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 and they're catching up, right? Production is catching up with the demand. Production is actually meeting the demand right now. And through direct co-ops, where I'm also director at Local Driver Co-op, we have sent thousands and thousands of PPE out through that website that I announced. Everyone, be blessed, be safe. Take care of your family, take care of yourselves. And um, until we meet in the next live session. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. Be well. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you guys.